Hey, I wanted to give an update on my power draw bar and the manual tool change macro that I came up with. Uh, I've been using it now for about a month, month and a half, and I love the power draw bar. It saves you so much time, and it's well worth the uh, couple of weeks it took me to build it, and the uh, maybe 80 bucks that it cost total for me to, uh, to uh, set it up. It works good. The manual tool change, I've had to make a few changes, and I found out that, like with most everything, I just had it a little too complicated, and it didn't really need to be so complicated. Uh, don't know if you can see this or not, but originally I had it look and see where the X, Y, and Z position start was of the tool change. And then at the end, I had it go back to those positions. Well, that really, for me, that's not necessary. It's probably not necessary for most people. Um, what I'm doing now is I just put a line of code in there. I semicolon the X, Y, and the Z code that I originally had in there and added another line of code. And I'm just moving G, I'm moving Z, excuse me, to minus two inches. That's two inches from... Uh, the home limit switch in machine coordinates and then I just have it at the bottom after it changes the tool sets the offsets does everything else gives you the message box uh, at the end I just have it move Z back to Z.25 inches uh, and that's just a quarter inch up from my work surface and that is in uh, work coordinates and then it starts the program over from there and that just seems to work out a lot better I haven't had any issues and so I thought I'd just do a quick video let you know what's going on and kind of give you an idea of how the whole tool change system works and how much more uh, easier it is for you so Let's get started here, and I'll probably edit out some of the machining just to show you, but just to do the uh, tool change uh, So basically I just start the program Now it's always good to start with no tool in the spindle because it's always going to start with tool zero instead of whatever tool you were using so it's going to start with tool zero as soon as you boot up Mach 3 so the best thing to do is just don't have a tool in there that's what I found because you don't you don't want any crashes so we're going to start the program it's going to move now it's going to go back up to the tool change position it's going to give you my Diet. It's going to give you the dialog box. It's going to tell you what tool to put in there. We're going to change the tool. Excuse me. Okay. I was using the air for something else. Alright, we're going to change the tool. Start the spindle. Close this up. And we just click OK. It's going to move down to 0.25 inches. Hit cycle start. It's going to start running the code. Excuse me, 
025. This is just some aluminum, a uh, quarter inch aluminum plate. And I just use the alcohol every so often just to keep it cool. Flood coolant will be next. My, my next project is going to be flood coolant. And hopefully I'll get that in pretty soon. I've been avoiding flood coolant all this time because I just didn't want the mess. But I'm getting to the point now where I believe I need it. So, so we'll let that run. When we get close to the next tool change, we'll come back. change position. Gonna give me the message box. Manually turn the spindle off. Pop the tool out. The next tool is a center drill. Excuse me. A center drill. Gonna drill center drill three holes. The air compressor is probably gonna cut on let me cut make sure. Okay. Start the spindle back up. Clear the message box. Goes down to 0.25 inches above the work surface. And then we hit cycle start. Gonna do three center drill holes. Take out the center drill, put in our eighth inch stub drill, back on, clear the message dialog, goes down to a quarter inch above the work surface, hit cycle start. drilling for this particular operation. Goes back up to the tool change position. Pop out the tool. This is an eighth inch ball nose. Eighth inch ball nose end mill. Going to cut a little slot. Clear the dialog box. Goes down to quarter inch above the work surface. Hit cycle start. Now I'm moving, I move the X and the Y axis in a position so that I can remove the work and put in another, put in another piece. But as you can see, that makes life a lot easier. It seems to work out great. Uh, when you're setting up the tool offsets, uh, you have to play around with it a little bit, get it just right. I didn't have a precision height gauge 
to use to set it up. So what I did was I took my longest I took my longest tool, which in my case is a uh, four flute end mill. I start out with the longest tool, and then I set my Z with the longest tool. And get the measurement from the bottom of my spindle to where my Z is and that is my tool offset for the first tool then I just move progressively down to each tool that's shorter and set each one uh, and that it seems to be pretty good for what I'm for what I'm doing it works out pretty well and I haven't had any issues with that yet once you get them all set and get everything programmed in your code uh, turns out pretty good but you can see this is just a rough cut but it does really well and I'll come back and do a finishing pass but that's the tool change macro and the power draw bar and it works great so if you're you haven't decided to do the power draw bar yet or if you've been putting it off I should say don't don't delay uh, one thing else another note that I wanted to point out if you're going to use the tool Tormac tool holders factory tool holders instead of making your own um, the R8 collet for the Tormac allows for this deeper shank whereas some of your import R8 three quarter inch R8 tool holders do not so these these will not fit in there I made that mistake I bought uh, an import three eight quarter R8 collet and some Tormac tool holders and they wouldn't slide all the way up in there so I ended up having to go back and get the Tormac because I had some a couple a few of these that I wanted to use. Uh, but I did make about 10 of these on my own. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, probably about $15. Uh, really. Uh, precision wise, I haven't really noticed the difference. The ones I made work just as well as the ones that I bought from Tormac, but I, I'm pretty sure they're a little bit more precision. But uh, it worked fine for me. So that's it. Uh, if you want this macro, again, shoot me an email. I don't know if I can post it up in the notes or not, but if I can, I'll just post it on YouTube. So we'll see. I'll give that a try. All right. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you got any questions or if I can help in any way, I'd be happy to do so. I'm kind of still a novice myself, so I don't know a whole lot. But what I do know, I'm happy to pass along.